Hi, this is Stephen, and um, I'm here with Diane, who is our head of customer support here at uh, Take Lessons, and she's been with us for about six months or so. Her background, she has um, about um, a zillion years of experience, <laughs> although she's only um, 28, um, in customer service and led the JetBlue customer support team, had 1,600 people reporting to mm -hmm. in customer service, so knows a little bit about customer service, I would say. So. Um, I kind of explained the situation to her job interviews coming up. So what would you say the, the um, if, if you're the company and you're looking to hire the customer support people, and this is for like a you know, gas company, utility type uh, company, so I'd imagine it's similar to it's a larger company mm -hmm. like JetBlue. Um, what are hints? What would you suggest? What are they looking for? What, uh, what kind of answers should she give? And I, we brought up the STAR method. Right. And you're familiar with that, so just... Okay. Hi, Kelly. Good luck on your interview. I, interviews are uh, always challenging, even if you do them every year, but you'll do great. The STAR, basically, you want to really think of specifics and give specific answers. Uh, it's the situation, the task, the action, and the result. So they want to hear, okay, what was it? What were you presented with? What did you feel was the task you needed to take that needed to take place? What action you decided to go with? And then the final result. And if you can just keep thinking star in your mind, because uh, we did use that interview approach at JetBlue. If you, if you can't think of a situation, then think of one that could have happened. Uh, you know, if you've been out of the workplace for a little while, just go back over the weekend before your interview and think about all the different customer service situations you were faced with. A lot of times they're looking for, how are you going to handle an irate customer, somebody that's unhappy? How are you going to bring that back around? So think of a situation this weekend where you had a difficult customer and how you brought it around. A time that you went really above and beyond to help somebody, uh, you know, that you retain them for the company. Think of those type of situations. They're looking for, mainly what we look for in customer service is someone that's engaging, someone that can connect with the customer, feel empathy for them, you know, has their own personality, not a robot, you know, type uh, person. And I think uh, when you're interviewing, you want to have, you know, eye contact with them. Keep the answer, try to keep, try not to ramble. Um, there's nothing worse if you get in there and then they go into this five-minute spill on each situation and task, and you're just like, okay, let's get to the result. So it's to be very concise right. to the point. Right, be and very concise. So I guess they look at that and say the way that you interview is also the way you're going to be on the phone, right. so they can liken those two. Okay. Right. So it's, it's uh, you know, kind of get to your point as quickly as you can. And, you know, just be at ease. Um, you, you really look for that in the customer service because customer service, I love it, but it is challenging. You, you talk to a lot of people that are really happy and you talk to a lot of people that aren't happy. And it doesn't matter what industry you're in, that's how it's going to be. Whether it's a gas company, take lessons, JetBlue, it, it doesn't matter who it is. You get the people that are not happy and a big the biggest role that customer service has is let's keep the customers that we have and let's give them a great customer experience. And if they are unhappy with us, how do we turn that around so that we don't lose them? So when you're thinking of your uh, situations this weekend, you know, think of those type of situations too. Uh, let's see what else would... Um... Perhaps maybe you would mentioned some character traits, someone who is engaging. Um, second E was uh, empathy, and then you had a C. Not conversational. Uh, what was engaging? Empathy and well, or I could just say, what other like type of characteristics that they that they want to see? You know, they're looking for someone that. Uh, this is an important one, uh, that they're not just black or white, that there is that gray area because policies or guidelines. I mean, they are put in place for a reason, but then also you want to be able to go, you know, with the flow, and if and if it's something that. They've empowered you to do to make that decision. You know, the customer service is always gray, and I, we have a challenge with that everywhere. You know, there's people that just think black or white. So you want people, you want the company to know that you can, that you're comfortable in that gray zone, that you uh, can work independently, that you don't need, you know, someone standing over you the whole time. I, I, not is this a phone position? I would imagine so. Yeah, probably a contact yeah. center type. Probably thing. Con yeah. So you want to uh, 
you know, an important part is because you're probably working in close quarters that you can work with a diverse group of people that, you know, you get along with all types, that um, you're part of a team, that it's a team effort and it's not just I, I, I. A lot of times in interviews you'll want to use we or this is what we did and, you know, instead of always the I, that's something that we watch for because, you know, it is a team effort. Let's see, what else? I imagine something else would be helpful is um, I always I always would would um, recommend that they think win win. In other words, how do I get a win for the customer as well as within the guidelines of the company? So the win for the company, win for the employees, and really have that non adversarial type tone in everything you do. It's like how do we get to a yes? Yes. Like, yeah, we... that's a good point. That's very good. Cool. Um, and just, you know, be at ease. I mean, I think that's the hardest thing in interviews. And like I said, it doesn't matter how often you interview. So don't feel like you're alone in, you know, being nervous because no matter how often you do it, it's it's a nerve-wracking experience. But I'm, I'm sure you'll do great. I'm trying to think, you know, just remember the star. I, I just always told them, just keep saying that. Situation, task, action, result. So it's what, what was the situation? What did you do? What was the... Um... Or, yeah, so what action do you think you're going to take? What's okay. the, or what task is involved right. in the situation? What action did you take? And then what was the result? Okay. You know, so the result is the customer decided they weren't going to cancel after all. You right. know, I was able to help them. Or, you know, they might ask you questions to uh, how you get along with, you know, a team. Or have you ever had a situation where you disagreed with your boss? And how did you, you know, handle that? Mm -hmm. So even on those situations that aren't going to be customer um, questions, they'll probably ask you a lot of, about teams and, you know, people you've worked for, a time you disagreed with a decision the company made, how'd you handle that? No matter what the question is, you will want to keep that star in mind. Mm -hmm. Because I know at JetBlue, um, you were graded off of if you, if you did the star on every single answer. So if that's the method they're using, that's probably how they're doing it. But I think it's great that you know that that's the interview style that they use because you can spend, like I said, I have spent weekends before preparing for interviews just going over situations in my mind so that you have them fresh in your mind when you point. Yeah. get there. So I think the key, like one thing I focus on is the R part of that. I want someone that not only can, for instance, be uh, happy, genuinely friendly with, an, with the employee, but are they results focused? Can they move from... A situation to what is the outcome at the end of the day that's what we're all paid to do is right. to get an outcome and so those results I think are really really critical to to this particular yeah. I look for that in every single interview right they have to have they have to be results oriented right yeah. that shows they have ownership right yeah. there's an ownership mentality and that they that, care and yeah. that they're you know a lot of times in the contact center you get a group of people that you know they're just kind of there going through the motions, but they're not really passionate about what they're doing or passionate about the customer. So I think that it's important in the interview to really stress, you know, the customer and the, the customer being the number one and being important. And, you know, uh, I, I've interviewed many people and you ask them, you know, so how would you help the customer? And, oh, I'd figure it out. Or, you know, and you just really want to, that passion towards the customer, you want that to come and, you know, do some background on the company, um, find out what you can about the company, what their culture's like. Um, nowadays, you can kind of pretty much get all that off of, you know, the Internet and looking at different blogs and that. So uh, do as much research as you can on the company so when you go in, you're prepared with that. I think it would actually, and some folks have done this here, uh, I think it's wise, call into their call center. That's a good idea. Call in yeah. and, um, I don't know, act act like an angry customer yeah. and then act like a good customer and just say, hey, I'm here to get in, for, like, uh, or my service isn't working yeah. or I can't find, and listen to how they perform on the phone and it might give you indication of how their training is and um, that sort of thing. Yeah, so that might a, be a good... Yeah, that's a really good idea. And, you know, if you have had a gap in employment and, you know, situations don't come right to mind as far as your, your jobs, we all do things in our personal life, whether it's volunteer work or... You know, whatever, it is. I mean, here everybody's so involved in music and after hour things. And, you know, it's okay to use some of those situations too if, if those come to mind, you know, quicker. It doesn't really have to be 
every question, every answer doesn't have to be around a job. It can be around your day to day, whatever you do in your spare time mm -hmm. that you're passionate about. Yeah. So always focused on, yeah, how the actions that you took and how those were a win for the customer and then what the result was. That's, mm -hmm. right. yeah, yeah. That's awesome. Okay, anything anything else you want? Nope, might? good luck. Okay. Well, good luck, uh, Callie. I uh, hope everything goes great, and we'll chat with you soon. So how old is she? <laughs>